Hi, my name is Mark Taylor. Welcome to Mark D Maker. Today we're going to be doing wood carving for the beginner. Now, if you're more advanced, you already know this. This video is probably not for you. This video is for the people that are just getting started with wood carving or have never done it before. And I'm going to show you how easy it is with just some basic principles. I'm going to show you how it's done. Come on. We're going to start off with what you're going to hear over and over and over again. Anytime you're working with wood, they talk about the grain of the wood. What is that? Grain of the wood is how the structure of the wood is. If you can imagine a whole bunch of straws grouped together tightly, make up the structure of this wood. So literally, if you were to put the end of this into water, it would suck water up on its own, just like a bunch of straws. So keep that in mind, the strength runs with the grain. So if you have all these straws com compressed together, they're pretty strong. So the grain of this wood runs with the length. And I'm gonna show you, it's pretty, pretty strong, I can't break it. When the grain runs side to side and a little board this long, the structural integrity is kind of gone. Breaks super easy. Because the grain, the structure is gonna go like this. I cut this off the end of a board. And you can see just effortless, how easy it breaks. It's tough to cut across cross grain. And let me show you something, a little carving that I've already started of this deer, just out of a piece of pine board that I got from the big box store, it was Home Depot. And with this piece of pine, I laid a pattern on it. And you can get wood carving patterns all over the place for free. But you can also buy books, download patterns, they're out there. I even go through wildlife books or magazines and project images and trace it and cut them out. But this is the grain of the wood that I was referring to. Why would I do it like this? To give strength to these legs. These legs are pretty tough. If the, if the grain was running side to side, these things would snap off like nothing. They would just be gone. So we're gonna keep referring to grain, carving against the grain, carving with the grain, keeping the grain with the, the strength, reinforcing the small pieces with the run of the grain. So that term is important and we'll come back to it later. So to do a wood carving, we need a wood carving knife. I was in a craft store, I believe they see more, and they had this one. But for the beginner, I think just a plain old exacto knife. And you can get ones with extra blades, or like I like to do, you can buy this pack of 15 blades, and that way you always have sharp blades. Basswood is the preferred wood to buy for carving, but face it, most people are going to go to your big box store, walk down the lumber aisle, and become overwhelmed with all the lumber. I can tell you one thing for sure, stay away from common boards. These ones with the knot holes in them are terrible to carve. Select boards. This is what you want. Now you just have to make sure that you buy a board wide enough to accommodate your pattern in the right grain orientation.
So when buying wood, take your pattern with you. Lay it on the wood and see if it fits. All right, so what we're gonna be talking about today is basically carving one by. So one by is three quarters of an inch thick wood. Those boards that I was showing you at Home Depot. This is a little carving that was carved by using that three quarter of an inch. And you can see it's, it's one sided, not very thick, but you can get some pretty cool results. This would make a wonderful gift for somebody who played an instrument. You can get some pretty, pretty cool results with carving one by. All right, so we're gonna talk about grain again. So I kind of violated the rules on this carving. This is pine, it's a pine board. It was a wide pine board. But I violated the rule of my cross grain and it broke. And I'll show you what happened. So you can see the leg here. All of this grain is running this way, which gave good strength to the tail, but made this very weak down here. And so it broke. So if you're going to do that, you would have to find a way to try to support this a little better by using a dowel or, or some other technique to make this strong. <clears throat> this one is burned in. It has burned, uh, so it was textured and then burned in with a wood burner. And you can see down here, I tried bridging this to make this stronger. I ended up gluing it. It still broke across here. So if I were to do another one of these, I would probably just end it right here. Drill a dowel up through there and then carve the dowel down into this piece. So here I have some pieces of basswood. These little guys I bought on Amazon. This is basswood. And these are gonna be for little Santas. I carve a lot of Santas in the winter time. And these are just gonna be little people. That's a little Santa, an example of a one of the little people. So, this was a one by. It's pine. You can see it's clear. There's no knot holes in it. The grain is running up and down. You can just see by those lines, they're running in this orientation, not like this, but like that. I laid a pattern on it. You can trace out patterns. I tend to cut out my patterns, spray them with an adhesive, lay it on there, and then cut these out either on a scroll saw or a bandsaw. Now, scroll saw and a bandsaw, um, you can get a pretty decent scroll saw for a little more than a hundred bucks. A bandsaw was probably going to be a little bit more than that. If you don't have the scroll saw or the band saw, you can use a coping saw to cut these out. But what you can do is there's a lot of carving companies out there that sell blanks. Now a blank usually looks something like that. When you carve out a blank and sometimes the this profile as well is cut out what that blank would look like when you're finished is something like this so 
a great little magazine is Woodcarver Illustrated, and they carry in every edition uh, plans, patterns for carvings. That's what the finished carving would look like. But step by step instructions on how to carve is a great magazine to have if you're interested in wood carving. There's all kinds of books with patterns and wood carving supply will have actual life-size patterns. This is a Cooper Hawk. It's a burrowing owl. So you can get life-size patterns of the birds themselves and even buy the blanks from them already cut out. You just carve them. So here are some carvings in various stages of completion. And when I cut them out, I usually just put on some earphones and cut out a bunch of them. Well, here we have some basswood that's thin. It's maybe a quarter inch thick. And that's where I, I made these little guys. These are all a quarter inch thick. And you can see minimal carving on them, but with a little paint or stain. It would might make nice ornaments or wall hangings. You can incorporate them into other art. And then I have some pins over here. These actually have pin backs on them. So you can see you can do all kinds of stuff. Big projects, little projects. This eagle here is not done yet. Still needs a little paint on them. But it gives you an idea of what a beginning carver can accomplish. All right, let's get down to some nitty gritty now and let's talk about the knife and introducing the knife to some wood. Now, an important thing about your knife, whatever type of knife you're gonna use, is that it be sharp. When you start to cut wood, it should slice the wood and slightly polish it. It'll have a little bit of shine to it if you twist it around in the light and look at it. It's almost polished. When you're carving, you'll always take little small pieces like so. Small pieces give you good control. You never want to just dig in and fling it. That's no control over the blade and you will get hurt eventually. Nice controlled and this is called a pivot cut. Anytime you see somebody doing something precise with a blade or let's say your dentist with a tooth scraper or a probe they're anchoring their hands. Painters will anchor their hands when they're doing fine work. So you always want to anchor. Now you, in some instances, you won't be able to do that. You'll have to rely on this cut, which is a paring cut. Notice I'm going with the grain here. Grain runs the length of the board here. I'm keeping my thumb below where the knife comes out. Although it can't go that far. It's kind of like peeling a potato. So with these simple techniques You should, you should be well on your way to being able to control your cuts. So get a nice piece of basswood or as straight as you can find grain pine with no knot holes. You take your time. Keep a sharp blade. If you see that this surface is not smooth 
and you start to see it a little bit rough, that means you're crushing the wood instead of carving it. That is dangerous. That's when you're going to get hurt. Switch out your blade, put in a sharp blade, and, and later for more advanced techniques, I'll talk about sharpening knives and using different carving knives. Now, it's very difficult to come across cross grain, even though it breaks easy, it carves very, it's very tough. You need a very, very sharp knife and a very, very low angle of attack to be able to carve in grain. It can be done, but it takes a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to show you what's called a stop cut. Now a stop cut is a straight cut in and then the pivot cut up to it. That is a stop cut. Similar to that is the V cut. So you have straight angle and a slope or two sloping angles. Here's a close-up view. This is the stop cut straight in and the pivot cut up to that stop. This is used a lot in figure faces and all kinds of carvings. And this is the V cut. So we're coming in at two angles. Another very useful cut. Here's some different angles so you can see how you can use them. As you, as you get better and better, you'll learn about the grain. Here's a, here's a little thing about the grain. Watch this. I'll I'll dig in and that just broke out. I didn't carve. I only carved up to here and from here to here broke out. So I don't know if you can see this or not. But this is fine finely cut and polished and then you get down here and you can see all the textures you can even hear it how rough it is versus this smooth rough that's because that's split out you can use that to your advantage but you can also lose detail by the wood splitting along the grain so in carving, when you're cutting, you're basically creating light and shadow. That is what gives you form and shape. Light, light and shadow, all these lines, that's, what, that's what's happening. That's why you can see the image of this character is light and shadow. And so that's what you're trying to create on your piece when you're carving it. So I'm just going to strike a line across here. Nice, sharp blade. I'm going to use my pivot cut and just relieve underneath that line. Now we have a shadow line. There's a shadow under here that really makes makes it stick out, gives you the difference between this piece and this piece. The stop cut there. Stop cut. 
cut here. Now it really looks like it's set back by taking back these edges here. It really looks like it's a different size almost. So there's a little bit of a, a technique I use called the sweep cut is I move the blade along so it's shaving. See I start off at the base and I'm moving towards the tip across the wood and it gives you like a rounded look almost like you use the gouge on this. So if I was making let's say like a a hat I would use this technique that's gonna dig it in now because the grain is running this way you can make this swoop cut like so but you wouldn't be able to come back this way with a swoop cut because you're going to dig into the grain. It's almost like petting a cat or a dog backwards. You can feel it. When you cut this, you can hear the wood almost like whistle and make a little bit of a sound. This way, it digs in. As soon as you feel it dig in like that, might as well stop because either the knife is going to slip out and cut you or this will will split so carving with the grain is a good thing the more you do the the quicker you will recognize when it's happening and you'll just change direction i always say you can't carve uphill that's against the grain. You can only carve downhill. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put more videos on carving and we'll get more advanced as we go. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.